Hey guys, welcome back to the JPS YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be speaking to you guys about why you probably shouldn't be training for fat loss. Now, this seems to be quite a common practice in the industry. We see a lot of people walk into the gym with the intention of doing some sort of resistance training that aims to promote further fat loss. We see a lot of metabolic type training that involves circuits, you know, high intensity intervals, uh, supersets, high repetition sets, etc. And this may be a faulty way of approaching your fat loss endeavors. And hopefully uh, throughout the rest of this video, I can elucidate why that is the case. Now, the reason people choose this type of metabolic training is because it comes with a large degree of energy production, specifically anaerobic energy production and potentially more energy expenditure. So the reason this is the case is because, you know, we see high intensity in full training, you know, we, we kind of know what that is and that is highly anaerobic and it does burn quite a few calories in an acute period of time, which sounds like a good uh, thing at face value and metabolic training you know on the gym floor with weights tends to uh, resemble the hit training that we usually you know associate with you know sprint intervals on the treadmill or on the bike or whatnot okay very similar styles of training one can be done with cardio equipment the other can be done on the gym floor and that's why a lot of people choose the metabolic type of training when their overarching goal is fat loss now, what we need to understand here though, is that fat loss itself is predicated on fat balance. So the difference between fat oxidation rates throughout the day, or just fat burning, and fat storage. Okay, the balance between the two, so how much fat you're burning on a 20, in a 24 hour period, and how much fat you're storing, is termed your fat balance, and is going to determine uh, the outcome of you know how much fat that you currently hold on your body. So it's going to determine whether you lose fat or gain fat. Now, this fat balance can be influenced by your calorie balance, but it isn't directly associated with your calorie balance. And what I mean by this is, you know, believe it or not, we can lose fat whilst eating in a calorie surplus. So although a calorie deficit is the best way to influence fat balance and and uh, promote fat loss, you know, there are some exceptions to that uh, rule. Now, resistance training itself, and in fact, any type of resistance training modality, whether that be, you know, circuit training or just a straight set of eight reps, uh, we can't, with this type of training, we can't really influence fat balance to a great degree, okay? And we hear people speak about, you know, energy expenditure on the gym floor and trying to do some sort of training, you know, whether it's metabolic training or circuit training to increase energy expenditure. But the reality is, you know, on average, resistance training sessions are going to burn anywhere in between 70 to 300-ish calories. And this is dependent on many factors. How many sets you're doing, you know, the style of training you're doing, the individual themselves, how big they are, how much muscle mass they have. But on average, for the most population, we're going to burn anywhere in, in between that 70 to 300 calorie uh, mark uh, or range within a resistance training session. And in the grand scheme of things, that really isn't that many calories. Like when you think about it, you can eat a slice of cake and restore that, you know, energy expenditure um, in a matter of seconds, essentially. A slice of cake is most likely going to be more than 300 calories. So something to keep in mind there. Now, with all that said, can resistance training that aims to increase energy expenditure lead to a greater deficit and thus promote further fat loss? Maybe, but there are a few considerations that we need to make here. And one of the most important ones is muscle retention throughout a fat loss phase. Now, the thing is, if you are looking to improve your body composition, and this is a goal that most of the population have when they're aiming to lose fat. They want to improve their body composition, which means they want to maintain muscle mass or, or even grow some muscle mass, but lose fat. This is what gives that toned, you know, lean look that people really want. And we really need to ensure throughout a dieting phase that we're trying to uphold our muscle mass and, and not lose it. And metabolic training, circuit style training, you know, high, high rep sets and all this stuff that I outlined earlier may not be the best way to retain muscle when you are in a calorie restricted state. So what we recommend is to perform or partake in some sort of a resistance training program 
that actually aims to maximize muscle growth. Okay, the same sort of program that you would undertake if you were actually trying to build muscle, if that was your overarching goal. Really, your training shouldn't change too much from you know a, a muscle building phase to to a fat loss phase. There are some you know things we need to account for, and I'll get to that in a second. But we shouldn't see this overhauling of the program just because you're entering a fat loss phase. Now, if we do this, then we're going to ensure that we're giving the body every reason possible to hang on to that hard earned muscle. Okay, and this is increasingly important for individuals who are quite lean because these individuals are more susceptible to using protein for energy. Okay, and when I say protein, I'm referring to protein that comes from muscle mass. So these guys need to make sure that they are training uh, with the goal of maxim ma maximizing muscle growth so that they can maintain as much muscle as possible. Now, with all that said, I wanna finish off with three quick tips for anyone who is looking to lose fat and improve their body composition. The first one is keep training in the way you usually do to build muscle. Okay, like I said earlier, don't make too many changes and don't look for any fancy strategies that aim to promote further fat loss. Okay, what we need to do throughout a calorie restricted period is adjust the amount of training we're doing, so our training volume and our training intensity, so how hard we are training based on our recovery capacity, which is going to change as the diet extends. Okay, so a calorie deficit is a form of energetic stress. Okay, the body's physiology is impacted when you are calorie restricted, and this has implications for recovery capacity. So you may not be able to do the same amount of training volume or train as hard as you were when you were in a calorie surplus and you were aiming to build muscle, and you may have to pull back slightly. Okay, but like I said earlier, we don't want to overhaul the program. Okay, we just need to be smart about how much uh, we can recover from. We need to understand our recovery capacity and make sure that our training corresponds with that. The second tip is to choose exercises that come with a low fatigue cost to maximize the training effect and minimize the overall fatigue that you get from that training. Now, when you're eating in a calorie surplus, you can get away with some additional fatigue because you can probably clear it quite rapidly and recover really well. But when you're in a calorie deficit, things start to change. It's a different story and you need to minimize the amount of fatigue you accumulate from your training, but you need to maintain the effectiveness of that training too. So being in a calorie restricted state and more specifically a carbohydrate restricted state, which is generally the case when you're in a calorie deficit, this will increase the onset of fatigue, okay? And it will increase your perception of fatigue, or I should say it will skew your perception of fatigue. So things just feel harder when you are in a calorie deficit. You get, might get halfway through a set and it might actually not be that hard on your muscles on the target muscles but the set may just psychologically feel hard because like i said your perception of fatigue is skewed when you are carbohydrate restricted and this is important because if we're you know packing on heavy loads on the barbell on the leg press hacksaw whatever it is and you know we're doing a few reps we need to understand these reps with really heavy loads are probably going to be harder than they usually feel or they're going to feel harder than they usually feel okay even though the load is the same and even higher repetition sets these sets that come with a great degree of discomfort and deep burn within the target muscles they can feel a lot harder than usual if you are calorie restricted and all of these you know things can lead to individuals cutting their sets short just because the training feels hard but remember, it's the skeletal muscles that we're trying to target that need to feel the tension uh, and the hard, you know, from the training, not necessarily just our feelings. Okay, because really at that point, we're feeling the training a little harder than usual, but our muscles probably have a lot more in the tank. So something to keep in mind there. And the final tip is to let your nutrition and your cardio drive fat loss. Okay, leave resistance training for upholding muscle mass. Okay, remember resistance training is going to be the most potent stimulus for uh, maintaining, you know, muscle mass. 
by far. And we need to ensure that we're optimizing our training, okay, so that we minimize the risk of muscle loss. Okay, remember changes to your calorie intake are gonna have the greatest magnitude of impact on your calorie balance and thus on your fat balance as well. So changing your calories, adjusting your calories based on how you're progressing is gonna be the best way to promote further fat loss. And you know, there comes a point when it gets hard to continue making calorie changes and that's when you can utilize cardio to increase energy expenditure and further widen that uh, energy deficit, okay? So guys, I hope that all made sense. Uh, that is why you probably shouldn't be you know, training for fat loss. There's probably better ways of approaching this, especially if you want to uh, optimize your body composition and maintain muscle mass. So I hope that helped and be sure to let me know if you have any questions. See you next time.